Welcome fantasy, sci-fi, and romance author, Cassie Rose Clark. Yay! (laughs) And Cassie, I know we've been trying to coordinate this for a little bit, but I'm so excited to have you on the show. So thrilled. And in case listeners don't know, can you tell them a little bit about yourself and your writing? Sure. Um, So... As you said in the intro, I've written lots of different genres. Um, I'd say I'm primarily a science fiction fantasy writer, um, although I have written romance. Um, I was also a narrative designer for a while for a romance slash erotic interactive storytelling app. So a lot of my erotica writing experience comes from that. Um, I've also written for adults. I've written YA, like I've written kind of across the board, <laughs> across the board in terms of in terms of what I do. So yeah, that's honestly usually how I introduce myself. Um, I've written lots of genres and lots of age groups. That's so interesting in that you've written for an interactive app. Is that right? (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is that like based off of like a storyline or anything that maybe you create? Or is that based on like users, like what they choose? (laughs) It was like you choose your own adventure kind of thing. Yeah. Um, So like it was, you'd have a storyline and then you would kind of make choices that would affect kind of your experience of the story. Um, And these particular games, like I said, they were sort of romance erotica games. So a lot of the choices sort of centered around like how explicit do you you want to get with, you know, your story? Well, and that is a perfect like topic to kind of segue into because that's something I hear. It seems like all the time I hear discourse from romance authors, like open door sex in their writing, like where genre lines are drawn to qualify as romance or erotica. In your experience, what are the biggest factors determining if writing is romance or erotica? Yeah, I mean, that's such a great question. Um, I do think, I do wonder, I should say, I don't know for sure, that I feel like some of this discourse might be being driven by Amazon and Kindle Unlimited. Um Because from what I understand, Kindle Unlimited is a little pickier with like independent published authors. So I think there are a lot of erotica writers who are sort of classifying their books as romance to sort of avoid the Kindle censors, basically. So I think I want I always wonder because I've heard that discourse, too. I've always wondered if that like that is impacting it. I actually talked yeah. about that with Sarah Kill, who did book covers, because okay. she says you'd be so surprised because Amazon really snaps down on you, especially for women in particular. Like she said, she couldn't show like the side, side boob oh, basically yeah. of a woman. She yeah. said, but you could go shirtless guys, right. <laughs> but yeah. Amazon was so particular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Amazon, that's a great call out. They're very picky. Um, so I, I sometimes do think that some of the discourse is because things getting overlapped or being categorized in ways people don't expect. Um, I mean, for me personally, I think a lot of it has to do with what the story centers around. Um, So I feel like with erotica, the story has to center around sex in some way. Um, It has, like, if you took the sex out of the story, it would fall apart. You wouldn't really have a story anymore. You know, I think that to me, that's sort of the difference between erotica and other types of literature. Um, I think romance centers around a relationship, right? So the whole pr- purpose of a romance story is to see that relationship develop, you know, and then you also have erotic romance, which is a romance novel or not romance story that has the like focus on the relationship and you're, you're really in with those characters, but there's a lot of explicit sex scenes. And then sex is probably a big part of how their relationship develops. Um, So I think that's kind of where those distinctions lie, but I think it is a really slippery sort of blurred distinction. It's kind of hard, you know, it's kind of hard to say, well, this is like, because there's so much overlap between romance and erotica, I think, you know, because it's hard to just say, well, this is romance, but not erotica. Sometimes that's obviously the case, like with clean romance. But then you have a book that's like erotic romance and you're like, is it romance? Is it erotica? I was like, well, it's probably both. Um, and then I, but I also think you can talk about how erotica doesn't necessarily have to be romance. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be about a relationship or have that relationship arc. You know, it could be about one character sort of finding themselves sexually and they don't end up with anybody at the end. So that obviously would be a romance novel that would fit in with erotica. Um, so I think there's, I just think there's sort of two, over, two, two genres that overlap so much that they've kind of become conflated in a lot of readers' minds. And that's where some of the confusion and discourse is probably stemming from. Well, I, I 
think you are right on it because that is something I kind of hear a lot from different authors. They kind of almost use the two terms synonymously, like romance and erotica, like they're one in the same. For for what I've seen, it feels like they're confusing maybe the sex factor, like yeah. including like the spice level of like determining if it's erotica versus romance. Yeah, because I would not think erotica and romance are interchangeable. Like to me, they're pretty different things. Mm-hmm. Um you know, in terms of what they're trying to accomplish and why people read them. And there's so many, so much romance that doesn't have explicit sex in it or any sex at all. Like you can have a romance story that doesn't really have sex other than maybe, you know, some sensuality or kissing, but nothing super explicit. And it would still be a romance novel. It'd still be seeing these characters fall in love. I think you, like you're right. It isn't there is a little bit of that line, but it's kind of a blurry line. So people don't necessarily may not understand where the difference lies. Right. So they call something erotica, but it might be, it has erotic elements, but it's mostly geared as a romance. And you bring up a great point. There are certain beats like many romance novels follow. And since there's kind of blurry lines between the two of romance and erotica, are there similar beats that apply to like erotica? Uh, So again, I think it depends. Um, I do think if it's more, if it's like an erotic romance where there is uh, a relationship, not necessarily a couple, it could be a reverse harem or whatever, Um, Mm -hmm. but there's a relationship that's at the center. I think a lot of times that does follow sort of the romance beats. Um, But I do think erotica sort of has this sense of escalation. If you look at a lot of erotica, there's kind of a sense of each erotic scene being a little more intense or a little more extreme than the one that came before it, right? So you might start with a kiss and then you progress to like hand stuff, right? And then you just keep going um, (laughs) until until you kind of get to the big scene. That's as far as you're going to go. That's something I've noticed that I, I think this is part of sort of what makes erotica a readable because you're wanting to see like, what are they going to, you know, what are they going to do next? Like, what are we going to see next? Um, and so I think some, so I think in a lot of erotic romance, they'll sort of merge those two where there's a sense of sort of the sex, sexual encounters or the sex scenes escalating. But then you also have the the relationship beats where, you know, you kind of have that moment where the characters sort of have to fall away from each other for a little while before they come back. And you have that grand declaration of love. You don't have to have those things in, a, in erotica, but I do think you kind of have to have an escalation of how the sex scenes sort of build on each other um, and that sense of things kind of getting more and more serious as you go along. That's a really interesting point because, yeah, if you think about it, the romance is centered mostly around the relationship, like you mentioned. And then like there's things like the dark moment because we think it's going to, you know, pull the relationship apart. It's just going to fall. But then they eventually get back together. But for erotica, there is, like you said, that kind of build up. <laughs> <It's because> yeah. <laughs> the build up. Yeah. <laughs> there is the build up. There's the tension. Yeah. But like, where is that tension coming from? Or you've seen it before, at least in the sexual part of it. Yeah. Like what they're doing as far as like uh it escalating further. Are there any other things you've seen as far as erotica where that escalation might look different? Like I know it's sexual sometimes, but can it be anything else? Like physical or mental? That's a good question. I do think it can be mental. Um, I do think erotica, I think one of the distinctions between erotica and like, for lack of a better term, like literary porn that sort of has one purpose, you read it, mm. you know what I mean? You read it, you're done with it. I think erotica has a story to it. And so I think that in that story, you sometimes do have like an emotional escalation. You're you're connected with the character um, mm. in terms of what they're going through, what they're exploring, what they're learning about themselves. Um, I think that's a big part. You're kind of seeing that often a lot of times erotica will have this sense of the character becoming sort of a sexual being, right? Like maybe she starts out timid and then kind of as she goes through all of these encounters becomes sort of comes into herself sexually. It's almost like a coming of age type story. So I think that's another, it's still a sense of escalation, I think, but that's an, it's more emotional or psychological than Mm -hmm you know, than just like, oh, we're, we're having a bunch of sex scenes and they get more intense each one. Like they're connected back to the characters. And I think that's the good erotica will will sort of thread that emotional element, even if it's not romantic with the sexual content. So they're sort of braided together and it feels like a story that's not just a collection of sex scenes. 
See, that's a key for me as a reader, at least. Um, and something I like to try to include in my writing is like that connection, because mm-hmm. like I can read like all the sex in the world, but it doesn't for me, at least personally, it doesn't do anything because I'm just like, well, but I want the connection. Right. I want somehow to feel those connections. I think most people reading erotica, that's what they're looking for. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like you can see it if you look, this is funny. This I talk about this. I have taught an erotica class and it was one of the things I talked about. You can see it in the the, the reviews on Amazon. So if a book is erotica and it has reviews, like any reviews, good or bad, you know, it has more of a story. If it's erotica and it's like highly ranked, but it has no reviews, you know, people are buying it, but they're not, they don't want to admit to buying it or they don't want to admit that they read it. Um, and so I, because so you can kind of see the distinction just in terms of how people respond to them and sort of, are they going to admit to reading it or not? Like one of my favorite erotic novels is The Red by Tiffany Rice. Again, like you go, you look at it, look it up on Amazon. Like there's tons of glowing reviews. People are not ashamed to admit they've read this book, even though it is very explicit. It has t- it's like 90% sex, but because you're connected with the character and her story, you're like, this is a book. Like this is not just, this is not just porn. Like it's an actual story that I can admit to reading. That's actually on my TBR. It's been on my TBR for a long time. And I'll definitely have to, yes, I'll (laughs) definitely have to read it now after you called that out. But I also happen to find, I don't know if it's like a mobile uh, game or not, but there was a game based around it, I found. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it was so like, I, I didn't know that that was had become such a big thing that people were kind of seeking that out, like that kind of erotic storyline in those type of, like, like you said, you have written for an app that yeah. does that. So, I, I mean, it's, so there is the want out there. People want to read these kind of stories and they are interested in it. Mm-hmm. I just fear that people sometimes, like you said, have like a little bit of feelings about it, right? Strange feelings, other feelings, like publicly, maybe easier now because you can read on your phone or on a Kindle and nobody knows what you're reading. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think before the rise of Kindle and e-readers and stuff, um, you were, you were sort of bound by the cover. So if everybody, people saw you reading the red and they knew what it was, it's like, Oh, everybody knows what you're reading. But if you're reading on your Kindle, nobody knows what you're reading. You could be reading anything as far as they know. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think that makes it a little easier for people, but I also feel like with TikTok, people are just like, yeah, I'm reading this. I want fairy porn. Like they don't even really seem that up. Like they, they're like, fine. I feel like we're a little more open about it than maybe we were even 10 years ago. I do see a lot of like suggestions come through on like the book talk about like, yeah, I'm reading like that ice planet barbarians. It's weird, yeah. but I'm into it kind of thing. So it's like, okay, you yeah. know, go for it. I love that. Yeah. But uh, also you, you mentioned something really interesting. I thought was really funny. I just call it out because me and my husband both have a shared Amazon account. And sometimes he goes in there and if I get like looking at things like the red or like all kinds of erotica or romance novels, he'll, he'll look at me and be like, really? He's like, this is like all flooding now my suggestion list. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you're welcome. Like, these are yeah. all great things to read. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have that happen too. It also happens on my Facebook. I'll start getting a bunch of Facebook ads for like erotic novels. That's just the algorithm. I know, <laughs> right? Always calling us out. <laughs> you mentioned like the escalation can be physically, right? Or sexually in erotica, but does erotica have to be super explicit or can metaphor and suggestion be just as powerful? I think at this point in time, I feel like you probably, it probably has to be graphic. Like if you label something as erotica and it's not graphic, people are going to complain um, because I feel like there's just that expectation, even if it's a story built entirely around sex, which to me, that's what makes something erotica. Like, is it, is it dealing with sex? Um, But I do think that there's an expectation that it's going to be explicit and steamy. And if you don't have that, if you just sort of have suggestion, people are going to be like, this is an erotica. What are you talking about? But I do think that people have a little more leniency with like classic literature, because if you look up classic erotica, you'll find a lot of suggestions that by 2023 standards are not like there are no ice planet barbarians, right? Like they're not explicit, but they are very 
sort of sensual and deal with sex. Um, you know, I, you know, it's like Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller is like the classic example of that. There was like, there was a side, this is such a dated reference. Like the book itself is like 70 years old. And then, um, but there was an episode of Seinfeld where they joke about that. How like there was, everybody was like, oh, it's so, you know, you have to read this book. And then they read it and it's like, it's nothing. Because I think older books, you could, you know, there was a lot more suggestion. Um, Pablo Neruda is a poet poet who often gets described as an erotic poet. And when you read his poetry, it's absolutely beautiful and it is very sensual, but I wouldn't, it's definitely, it's not explicit, um, but it suggests sort of sexuality in a way that is very evocative. I personally think you could have an erotic novel that's not very explicit. I just think that most readers are not going to let you get away with it. They're going to be like, where are the sex scenes? <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think it's just sort of modern expectations are going to sort of force our hands a little bit. And that's fair because, yeah, that sometimes it is a more modern take of what erotica is, right? When you say erotica, people have a very specific thing in mind. And I think it's that expectation you're trying to meet. Yeah. Um, though I will say I, I'm with you. I've read some erotica where it is like they use some metaphor in there during like in the midst of the graphic scene, like they use some metaphors and then it just kind of stuck with me where it was just like, wow, that was really strung together in a way that was really empowering or just really cool. And like, Ooh, that's kind of sexy. You know, <laughs> yeah, I agree. those are my favorite sex. Like the best explicit sex scenes are the ones that do that. I think that add some element of poetry. So, because if you're, if you're not careful, you wind up with sort of slot A and slot B typewriting, where it's sort of just like, he did this and she did this and they did this. Um, it is when you start adding some of that poetry in there is where I think it can really, you can really capture the emotional impact of what the characters are going through in addition to sort of like the sexual. And it makes, it just makes it more sensual and more sexy and I don't know, more literary, I guess, but like, <laughs> but like that's because that's something I'm going to keep talking about the red because it's such a per, it's like the perfect erotic novel in my opinion. Um, but she does that. Like her scenes are really beautifully written while also being very graphic and using graphic language. Um, like I call them the words and everybody knows what they are, mm-hmm. um, but she uses the graphic language, but then she layers it with some, some elements of poetry that just, it all fits together really well. I was finishing up a book I had started back in late last year. I just hadn't had a chance to finish it. But then I noticed like for some reason, I just for the second half of the book, when everything finally happens, you know, they finally, it's been a slow burn this whole time. They finally get together. It's a triad. It just kind of fell flat for me. And so I actually looked at book reviews and like people said that exact same thing. It is, it was slot A into slot B Mm -hmm. and, you know, and maybe like other variations of that since it was a triad you're right. That's what kind of sticks with you. That's what kind of like, you know, gets the people going really like it connects with the readers as far as like this element of poetry to it. Cause it can't just be, you know, the very scientific of like, this went here, right. this did this because mm-hmm. otherwise it, it is, it feels like a lesson more than like, I mean, being engaged into a story of this person and their perspective of right. how they feel about sex and what this moment means to them. A lot of erotica and especially erotic romance is so focused around passion. Like it's really trying to elicit a very specific emotion in the readers, which is what the the, the characters are going through, which is that intense, like burning passion that we in real life don't, you know, experience all that often. Um, And so I think that the poetry element helps to build that so that we're really just like, wow. I need a mm-hmm. cigarette feeling after reading after reading the scene. There, I, I mean, I feel you. I've been in some. I've read some <laughs> of those books where I literally had to take a minute. I was like, "Whoo, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting too, I'm getting too worked up on this." Yeah. <laughs> so, where's my husband? But there's also, and um, one thing I wanted to ask too was, there's usually a theme of exploration in erotica, or at least erotica I've seen and watched. Um, sometimes that's self exploration or with somebody else. Do you think erotica should carry some type of exploration element? I think, I don't think it has to. Um, 
you know, I don't, but I feel like it's kind of hard to write erotica without some element of that because it has that escalation structure. Um, and so I think it just really lends itself to that sense of exploring. And I think what it does is it kind of creates tension in the story because if your character has done and seen it all, you know, every they're gonna they're gonna come to these things like, oh hey, I'm at an orgy and it's yet another orgy. Like that's not very exciting. That's I mean it's fun. I guess funny, but like if I'm reading erotica, I want I want them to be like super into it. And so I think sometimes that sense of exploration and self-discovery um, I think it adds that tension. And I also think that that's part of the appeal of erotica for a lot of readers um, is that kind of, it's a way to explore their own, their sexuality in a way that maybe feels kind of safe without going out and engaging in a lot of riskier behaviors. Um, so you can kind of live vicariously through the character. So I think that's also why that theme of exploration is so common. Because I agree. I mean, and most of the erotica I think, I can think of that's not sort of, mixing with other genres like erotic horror or that kind of thing because erotic horror is this is sort of a thing too that's a little different um but when it's more just sort of standard erotica or erotic romance I do think that theme of exploration is really common mm. well and you kind of like mentioned it earlier too about like you just mentioned it now the erotic horror so when writing an erotic scene or um connection can be implemented into other genres and um, it's become more mainstream to incorporate like intimate scenes or erotica and fantasy and sci-fi like I usually attribute that to Game of Thrones mostly <laughs> and then like things like that to like the boys recently I think had a lot of nudity a lot of erotica kind of thing uh, themes how do you approach incorporating an erotic scene or maybe erotica as an element into a book if it's a different genre really that's something I'm really interested in honestly and it kind of depends on the genre so like I mentioned erotic horror which I feel like people like are into it and so you can definitely blend those two it gets a little it gets kind of just it gets not kind of it can get very disturbing because it's dealing with delicate subject matter um but like horror readers will be like yes erotic horror I'm into this but I've noticed that a lot of times with like science fiction fantasy there can be pushback from sort of readers of those genres who are maybe the, the, sometimes if you put too explicit of a sex scene people will complain about it um which I think is I don't agree with obviously but it's something that I've I have noticed um game of you mentioned game of thrones um a song of ice and fire like those there are some pretty explicit sex scenes in those books. I don't know how well written. <laughs> like, I mean, people they, people make fun of them is what I'm, I mean, like, I don't think they're that bad, um, but they all, they do get made fun of a lot for maybe being kind of over the top or being unnecessary. Um, but I'm kind of like, eh, I mean, he has explicit violence in there. Why not have explicit sex too? You will encounter that pushback from especially science fiction science fiction readers um you know so that's one thing to kind of think about yeah. that's actually something a girlfriend of mine a, a very close author friend of mine had come across because she said she'll get bad reviews sometimes for her fantasy romance series because people go into it seeing fantasy yeah. but it's a fantasy romance and so like it the plot line is coming together, like this couple coming together and having a relationship. And it just happens to take place in a fantasy realm. And there's a lot of fellow fantasy elements and like she puts magic in there and everything. But then they come and complain that, well, I was in it for a fantasy. And she's like, it is a fantasy. Right. It just is a romance, too. There was for a long time. And I feel like it's getting a lot better because I feel like the romance and the sort of speculative fiction worlds have merged in a lot of ways. And fantasy romance is one of one of the reasons they're merging. Mm -hmm. But I remember encountering that a lot um, of just people being very upset if there was even the faintest hint of romance other than maybe a kiss. Um, they just, they were like, no. Um, and I think it's because there, were, there was a lot of sort of prejudice from speculative fiction readers against romance novels uh, mm -hmm. romance as a genre where they I feel like a lot of those readers were like well we're we're a little more high higher quality than those 
silly romance novels. And obviously sexism was playing a huge role in that. I probably 90% of it was sexism, if we're going to be honest. So I think that, that that legacy is still there. Like even the other day I saw somebody on Twitter, I went on Twitter for the first time in like three weeks. And I, the first thing I saw was somebody complaining about there being romance in science fiction and fantasy. Um, and they seem to be complaining about fantasy romance. And I was just like, why, why are you, why get upset about this? It's such a ridiculous thing to get upset about. If you don't want to read Ice Planet Barbarians, don't read it, you know, but it's still, it's still science fiction. Science fiction romance has been a thing forever. Um, I remember reading it like 15 years ago, finding like romance novels that took place on like a spaceship and, and stuff like that. The author that I really love was Linnea Sinclair. These are not erotic novels. These were just straight romance novels, but she, they were like a perfect, like they were as much science fiction as they were romance. And I thought that was really, really cool. And I had never seen anything like that at the time. Um, and I love that we're seeing so much more of it because fantasy romance, I think is really having a moment right now. And a lot of it is quite explicit, you know, I feel like there's a lot of like monster romances where the the hero is not human. <laughs> He's some sort of strange beast, kind of like Beauty and the Beast type stories, which I personally love those kind of stories and I will read them all day long. Um, like orc romances are pretty popular right now, um, which I'm also a big fan of those. There's one series by Finley Finn where she was doing some like actual world building around like the orc society um, so like those books are very explicit. They have lots of graphic sex scenes and, and stuff, but I'm like, there's all, there's fantasy world building in here too. Like, again, they're as much fantasy as they are erotic romance. Um, and so it's just, it's like blending any other genre. Um, it's completely legitimate choice. And if somebody likes to read fantasy and they like to read erotica, well, then of course they're going to want to read it together. <laughs> like that just, <laughs> that just makes sense. I, I've been like really into like the different monster romances because it is it is just kind of for me the same. It's like the branching out of like different like fantasy romance and everything like that. And you were talking about like uh, we had touched on before, like the erotic horror. So like if someone wants to go about like putting like erotica into that uh, genre, kind of mixing the genres, right? Like how do you propose they do it? Should they do it like writing the world building and then e like putting in the erotic elements in there or like focusing, like you said before, kind of on the sexual part of it and then working those other elements in? Ooh, that's a good question. I think honestly, that would probably depend on the writer. If they're more, if somebody's mm -hmm. like a big, big time world builder, um, I could see building the world first and then incorporating sort of the sex scenes. Um, but I also, I honestly, there's a lot of, you know, like we were talking about the erotic romance that takes place in a fantasy world or in space or with aliens or whatever. Um, but I'm I'm always curious to see stories that where the sex is sort of built into the world in some way. Um, so especially with like science fiction and fantasy or science fiction specifically, science fiction specifically, a lot of times it was called like the literature of ideas. And we're going to look at like, you know, gender and things like that, but we're going to put it, we're going to use science fiction tropes to do it. And I would love to see more ex explorations of sexuality. Um, and I think that's something where if you wanted to write a story like that, it would probably be, you'd probably kind of start with the sexual elements that you want to write about um, and then sort of build the world around them so that, that they're kind of interwoven into the story. Um, because I think it's fairly easy to do sort of like a Song of Ice and Fire type thing where you create this big fantasy world and you're going to have characters having sex. And so you just might as well write the sex scene explicitly um, because you're going to write, if you're going to write, especially if you're writing graphic violent scenes, you might as well be explicit with the sex too. You know, I think that's one way to approach it. But I think the idea of sort of weaving explorations of sexuality into like sort of a science fiction premise or a fantasy premise, I think could be really, really interesting. I've only ever in my life read one story that I felt did that. Um, well, I've read some erotic horror that sort of does it, but the story I'm thinking of it was this came out years ago. It was called Spar by Kiz Johnson. It was a short story that was published in Clark's World, which is a science fiction magazine. But it was about it was about a woman having sex with an alien, like a sort of amorphous blob alien. And it was really it really interesting sort of exploration of gender and sexual politics with this 
woman having sex with this alien and is he entering or is it they the the gender wasn't specified as, as the alien entering her or is she entering the alien and it was fascinating and i was like i really want to read more stories like that that really ask like what would sexuality look like if we had aliens and you know really kind of explored it maybe in a little bit darker way than a lot of romances are will do not that i have a problem with science fiction obviously i said i love science fiction romance but you know it'd be interesting to kind of see it from that sort of literature of ideas approach as well. Yeah, so I guess, you know, it's. I think it ultimately, to go back to your question about how a writer would do it, I think it would ultimately depend on the type of story you're writing and, and how you want to sort of blend them together. Um, you know, if you're telling more of a love story, you sort of have this, there's an easy way to get those sex scenes in there. Um, but if you're sort of telling more of an erotic coming of age or self-exploration type story, um, you know, that might be a little trickier to navigate and you may have to do some world building to accommodate it. There's a book I love that's called, I highly recommend it. Um, it's not erotica, but it's romance. It's called Strange Love. It is about a woman who ends up like kidnapped by a bunch of aliens and she has to enter this competition where she basically has to be paired with someone else, like one of these alien creatures. But when they do kind of get, they have all these laws around, like you can't um, consummate until like after the, this whole like trial and tribulation, kind of like a hunger games time of things like a, like a whole gauntlet. And then she like chooses a guy that she thinks is, seems like super like, okay. But again, there's questions of gender and stuff like that with other aliens, like they're not traditionally male or female. And then when they do get together, it's not like, you know, slot A goes into slot B. Yeah. They have to get really creative because yeah. their anatomy is totally different. Yeah. So like, it was super interesting to me just to see the world building of that. And like you said, kind of really thinking about those, like who these characters are, like as far as aliens and what would that look like for them? What would that sex look like? Or what would their relationships look like? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. Actually. Um, it sort of sounds like like erotic Star Trek, right? Like that it's like, we're going to show you these like strange aliens and we're going to look at their culture and we're going to, but Star Trek obviously couldn't show sex because it was on broadcast TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I'm a writer. I don't have to worry about that. So yeah, I like that. I like that, that idea of really exploring that because there are lots of books that do that kind of stuff, but they don't get explicit. Um, like Ursula Gwynn wrote a lot of books about gender um, where she could have gotten more explicit if she wanted to. I mean, she chose not to, and that's, that's a completely legitimate choice, but I would love to see stuff like that where it's like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to show you everything because this is part of life and it's part of culture and is, you know, it's a totally normal thing. So yeah, we're going to, for meet aliens, that's the first thing everybody's going to be asking about. It's like, how do we have sex with them? Like, let's not pretend that oh, if, yeah. if you have aliens, that's not going to be our reaction. So like I was kind of mentioning that, the what do they think of sex? And that's very much put in there. What a society kind of, how do they view that it right. as well? Because of course those things affect, um, I mean, if we're being honest, like the characters, that'll affect the characters, how they interact with each other, how they interact with their world. Of course, that's going to cross everyone's mind of how do aliens like have sex? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that these are the questions that keep me up at night. <laughs> Is motivation or plot important in differentiating if an intimate scene is romantic or erotic? Maybe. I think it kind of depends. To me, it's always been more sort of about the language that's used to, to kind of, you know, to sort of, not that in a, you could have a romantic sex scene that's very explicit, but I feel like the language is going to feel more romantic and that's going to really be what kind of sets the stage for you reading it as a romantic scene. Whereas if you're reading a scene that's not meant to be a romantic, but is meant to be maybe sensual, you know, there's sort of this connection to sort of like ships passing in the night, right? Like we're going to have this one passionate night and then we're going to be gone. I think your your language is going to reflect that. Um, and it's going to be different types, even though you may be using the same explicit words and the same explicit acts. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about sort of incorporating poetry. I think that is, to me, that's sort of where a lot of that distinction comes from. But I do think motivation in context is going to be part of it as well. If you sort of know, hey, this is a story where these characters are going to fall in love and we're going to see them live happily ever after. I do think that's going to 
sort of flavor how you read their sex scenes where if you're like oh these are two characters where they're not they're never going to see each other again that's you're going to have you're going to sort of read their sex scenes differently um so i'd say i guess sort of but i do think language is a big part of it too um and i've also i've read erotica especially you know maybe more sort of on the horror side where the sex scenes are uncomfortable like they're Ooh. explicit and maybe a little titillating a little bit but they're more they're like discomfort is a bigger or di- trying to disturb the reader is a bigger element um and so that i mean i think that's something because so much erotica is going to be more romantic or at the very least like pot like you know positive or this is a good experience um you know i think we don't think about those kind of scenes as erotica but i do think that's a part of sex as well um just kind of showing like sort of disturbing or extreme kind of things that can be very uncomfortable and come with like 50 million trigger warnings. Um, but I mean, I've, I've seen that as well. So yeah, again, again, it comes down to language and context. So. Absolutely. Like, I think, I think you bring up a really cool point, especially with the horror element, like is sometimes it's that ambiguity yeah. of like, it, you know, am I into this? Do I like this? I don't know. <laughs> Because especially if you're in horror, that's a feeling that, you know, you're you're aiming for, right? In a horror genre usually is discomfort. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of part of it. So if you're going to do that, I would hope you would kind of make it a little, you right. know, <laughs> a little uncomfortable, at least somewhat. The best ones to me make it uncomfortable, but also kind of exciting. Like you don't want to stop mm. reading, but you're kind of like, why am I, why am I reading this? I'm, but I'm, you're, I'm still turning the pages like the whole time. You're like, why am I reading this? But you can't stop. Um, to me, that's, that's sort of, that's how, whenever I read erotic horror, that, like that's how I know it succeeds because you're sort of pro- propelled by like the darkness of it. Um, but that's a very different feeling from, the propulsion of like a romance where I want, I want to see the characters get together and I'm sort of drawn on those emotions. Um, but I do think both of them are about sort of eliciting emotions in the reader. And that's sort of what pulls them through. I think that's why sort of romance and horror and erotica, they sort of fit together well, in, like to, in, to me in sort of an interesting way, you know, and like horror, our modern horror and modern romance sort of have a similar ancestor with like gothic romances. So it's that those two genres feel like they're diametrically opposed, but I think they actually fit together sort of interestingly. That's another thing I would be curious to see more of, like sort of horror romance stunts, you know, not so much like erotic horror, but like horror romance, whereas like a romance novel, but it's also like actual horror novel. You know, not just like, oh, he's a werewolf or a vampire, but like there's actually like horrific things happening. I would be really curious to see that too. And I think TikTok has made it clear that it's not too far either, um, because I have looked up, <laughs> I've read some of the books that are recommended in dark romance, and I'm like, whoa, those are pretty dark. I feel like I have a pretty high tolerance for darkness in my Ooh. literature. And even I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I got to take a step back. Um so I think that's something that that people enjoy, and I think they've always enjoyed it. But I think people maybe feel a little more comfortable talking about it and admitting it now. I don't know why. I don't know what changed that made people feel a little bit like, yeah, I want to read some some f dev romance. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not good with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I I did not know what to expect going into it, but I heard good things, and I was just kind of intrigued by it. Like I came in like a couple of years too late for it. And, but I, it was still going at the time, but there was a TV show. I don't know if you ever saw it, Hannibal. Oh, I'm like, I was obsessed with that show. I love that. <laughs> show. Oh my yeah. God. Like, yes, I was, that's yeah. what, when you're describing that, that's what it makes me think of because it wasn't meant to be, I don't think overtly sexual, but it was, it felt like that. And then with all the murder going on, like those two characters felt like they were drawn to each other, like just, and it was, it was good times. <laughs> So it's so funny that you mentioned Hannibal because when that show was airing, I actually had a podcast about Hannibal with one of my friends. We did we did a whole Hannibal podcast. We would analyze each episode, and I that is actually a really good. I can't believe I forgot about it. Um, but that's a really good example of a, of a romantic horror, I think, because I I did kind of read it as romantic, and I think it, I think there was some intentionality there. Um, I think it'd be I think it'd be insane to say that there, that the, that the writers were not like putting putting some of that in there on purpose, um, especially with the way the show ends and they 
I'm going to spoil it. They fling themselves off a cliff together, but it was just that kind of like fatal attraction thing that was so good in that show. Mm-hmm. and was so compelling and people loved it. That show had a big fandom um, and everybody, everybody shipped Hannibal and Will, which if you read, if you read like the source material, you would never in a billion years do that. But the show just made it so romantic and beautiful, but then really, really dark. And you're like, why is again, it's like, why am I into this? But you're just into it. <laughs> There's no shame. Well, exactly. And you talk about poetry, like making things like very poetic, very like almost like literary. And that show felt like it really framed both like this dark romance and like the murder elements in a very poetic way. Oh yeah. The murders themselves were all like strangely beautiful. Um Right? Like the way they were they were set up you're like wow that is art <laughs> good job Hannibal right I'm just like that took some time and talent <laughs> yeah like, I mean I, it's it's grotesque but like I appreciate it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> by the way what was that podcast I may have to binge that um it was called digesting Hannibal and I it, I don't think it's up anymore um mm. not archive it was put on a fan archive um we decided my my friend was like, I can't afford to keep hosting it, but it did get archived yeah. somewhere. I don't remember where it was though, unfortunately. I I think it was a Hannibal fan archive. So if you go- search for that, you might find it. Like listeners, believe me, you are missing out. If you've never watched <laughs> Hannibal, please, for my sake, <laughs> do it. Oh, it's, so, it's so good. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, such a good show. We kind of talked about like blending these genres, like kind of like Hannibal did and other like books and shows have done. What is a good method do you think of crossover for erotica or how to approach crossing over into um, erotica with your genre? You know, like I said, I think it does. I think you have to think about what kind of story you want to tell. Um, You know, do you want to tell a love story where, you know, you kind of have the framework for it? Um, Do you want to maybe explore the darker side of sexuality and then kind of think about how you want to do that? Um, you know, I think you can also say, you know what, it's totally valid to just be like, you know what, I'm going to write a fantasy novel, but I'm going to put it, I'm going to put sex scenes in there. And it's not necessarily be romance. I'm just going to, I just want to have sex scenes in there because why not? Because people like reading sex scenes. Um, I think that's, I think that's another way you can do it. Um, I think for it to be a true erotica though, um, or erotic science fiction or erotic fantasy or erotic mystery, which is sort of what Hannibal was. I think you do have to try to find a way to make the sex integral to the plot because it's, you know, writing a a fantasy novel where you throw some explicit sex scenes in there, you could take them out and the story would stay the same. Um, Mm -hmm. I think to really, to really get that sort of erotic feel, you want to try to find a way to braid them in there so that if you took the sex scenes out, the story wouldn't work anymore. And then you, I think that would also cut back on people complaining about the, about the sex scene, because you could be like, look, it's, important it has to be in there um i'm not just being explicit for the sake of being explicit which again there is nothing wrong with that i don't know why people you know try to say well it's important to the plot so that's what's like who cares if it's important to the plot just put it in there that's totally fine Mm -hmm. but i do think it's interesting to find ways to really explore because that would be a chance to really explore sexuality um you know to kind of think about sort of like the example you were talking about with the the aliens and the different ways they have sex. Um, it's a way to kind of explore that topic. So kind of trying to find a way to to bring it in, I think would be would be interesting. But ultimately it just depends on the type of story you want to tell. You know, and then to also pay attention to language and to think about how do you want this scene to come across? Do you want it to be romantic? Do you want it to be sensual? Uh, do you want it to be off-putting um, or uncomfortable? You know, it's all going to depend on sort of what you're trying to do. Um, I think some of the reason reasons the sex scenes in A Song of Ice and Fire get criticized and made fun of is because they can come across as a little uncomfortable when I think they're meant to be sensual, right? They're, they're meant to be a little more, like this is a nice moment. Like there's a character that everybody loves, Samuel Tarley. Um, and when he loses his virginity, that's one of the scenes that everybody makes fun of when he loses his virginity. Um, And I'm like, I think that is supposed to be a sweet moment because he's a sweet guy and the girl he loses his virginity to is really sweet as well. It's a sweet, it's just a sweet moment. 
And I think maybe some of the language choices don't get that across. And so people, that's why people have that reaction because there's a disconnect between what the scene is meant to be doing and sort of how it actually presents on the page. So I think really paying attention to your language, especially if you're writing a story where you are just sort of, hey, I want to have an explicit scene. Just really make sure that explicit scene fits, the language of that scene sort of fits with what the scene is trying to accomplish. Well, and this has all been so amazing. Romance versus erotica, kind of geeking out a little bit about Hannibal. (laughs) And so- where can listeners find your books or your classes? Because I know you mentioned you uh, also taught classes. So probably the best way to find me, um, go to my website, CassandraRoseClark.com. And that is Clark with an E. <laughs> if you Google Cassandra Rose Clark, I'll probably come up as well. Um, that has links to all of my books, everything that I've written, romance, science fiction, everything, fantasy, everything. And that also has links to my classes as well. Um, So I am actually teaching a class on writing romance that will be in April. And it is through an organization based in Richmond, not in Richmond, excuse me, in Norfolk, Virginia. But it's a hybrid class, so you can actually take it from anywhere um, because it will, you can take it, you can either go in person or you can joined via Zoom. So anybody can anybody can take it. So I'm teaching some other classes through them as well. I just mentioned that one because it's, it's, it's pertinent to the topic. Um, but I do teach a lot of classes on science fiction and fantasy and genre writing in general. Um, and I always list those on my website. Fantastic. And are your books available like wide? Are they in Amazon? Oh they- yeah, they're everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can get them on, you can get them basically anywhere. Um, Amazon, bookstores, indie bookstores, Barnes and Noble. 